Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. Okay, I am like, okay, I'm really disturbed. About? Right now. So I'm out running errands and whatever. The kids are still out on their two week break or whatever. And then I stop by Russell's office and, you know, we're having tequila because he keeps it there. And my man, I wow. have seen him become radicalized. And we've been, we dated in like 97. So Ron Russell and I have been friends for a long time. And he's the son of Syrian immigrants who came to El Paso fleeing the war but he's anti-immigrant and he's like, I, I hate the Democrats more every damn day. Where is he getting his information from? And I, he was like, Oh, I was listening to Glenn Beck today. Holy shit. Yeah. You got to get him to cut that off. Yeah. But it was, you know, he was like every time, like I was talking about random things. I was talking about a family here who's kind of came out of nowhere and like bought their way into society. They host some tournaments, polo, film, whatever. And he's like, you come in here and you just bring politics into everything. And I was like, um, there was nothing political about that tweet. I was just like mentioning like your family's been here since the twenties and you know, I was just like taking notice of, you know, Facts. things going on. Yeah. And like he literally, and he will say, like, Oh no. What did I do? Uh, you know, and whose family literally epitomized the American dream but is like talking down on those coming here for the exact same thing, for the exact same reason, 40 years later. And he doesn't see like the disconnect in, in his rationale. Well, I got to tell you, it's an incredible fucking point, poignant point that you're making, but it's, it's so unfortunate uh, that I hit my LAN cable and my internet went out, so I didn't record any of it. <laughs> <laughs> did you do that right now? I, I did. It went out for like a whole minute. I was like, oh, no, I'm missing the good shit. What the fuck happened? And then you froze. Is that I why like, I heard? Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Damn, I'm, look, man, I'm fucking up today. Need to get my life together. Well, well, I I I've stoned and couldn't concentrate on it. I can blindfold Carol with the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer that you did it <laughs> because that would hurt. Well, maybe maybe you could tie her up with dental floss. She's probably more into that. I like being able to see. Yeah. In fact, a pal would help me hold my eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that bad, Carol? Like, how high are you on a scale of like one to ten? Uh. Well, no, I'm, I feel good. Hey, what's up? This is D-Night. This is Carol. It's Ty. And you're listening to the Part in the Interaction podcast. All right, D, do the rundown. Give us the, give us the goodies on. Uh, all right, here, let me, uh, I'll, I'll tell you all the topics so you can kind of have a second to get your thoughts together. Right. Um, oh, that's sexy, Carol. 
If you can't see, Carol has her fingers in her mouth with her Sally Jesse Raphael glasses on, and it's hot. It's rather unfortunate. <laughs> A proud boy, not so proud of sedition. Surprise, surprise. Jeremy Bertino, a North Carolina leader of the Proud Boys, pled oh. guilty. Yeah, yeah, North Carolina. That's going to come up again. Uh, pled guilty to seditious conspiracy. Is it pleaded or pled? I like pled as like a past participle version. Yeah. Of the- no, I, I feel you. I, I get that too. Then I'm like pleading, pled, or I'm some man. I like pled, but I think it's pleaded. I think it's pleaded too. But let's let's be uh, grammatically incorrect here. Uh, Bertino pled guilty to seditious conspiracy on Thursday. Uh, whoopty fucking do. Uh, way to go, DOJ, securing that convict or rather guilty plea. Uh, he became the first member of the group to admit to the charge stemming from the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Bertino appeared before U.S. District Court Judge Tim Kelly to enter his guilty plea, which also included a count of unlawful possession of a firearm. In case anyone out there is still claiming that, hey, no one at the Capitol on January 6th was armed, he had a fucking gun. Bertino, who previously testified to the J6 Select Committee, was involved in key conversations and chats with other members of the group, including National Chair Enrique Tario and other members facing seditious conspiracy charges in the weeks before January 6th. Tario is set to go on trial in December, along with Proud Boys, Ethan Nordine, Joe Biggs, Zachary Rail, and Dominic Pozzola, who was the first member of the January 6th mob to breach the Capitol when he shattered a Senate wing window with a police ride shield. Uh, one interesting fun fact and detail about that particular window is that a number of the windows leading into the Senate wing and or just actually the Capitol building in general are reinforced. And, you know, it's it's quite quite odd and suspicious that he found one of the few windows that wasn't reinforced and went straight to it. Yeah, that's, it's uh, very alarming inside information there. Maybe potentially prosecutor say Tario and is that someone was helping him on the inside. Well, I feel like if he pled guilty and there was someone who fed him inside information about the particular structure of the building and the layout, that information will be in prosecutor saying, Get- yeah, they're gonna. He, yeah, he's gonna write those motherfuckers out. Anyway, prosecutors say Tario and his allies, look, his allies, developed a plan to besiege the Capitol, relying on and in fact organizing and spying on members of the mob to help break through police lines and get inside the Capitol. It was part of an effort that prosecutors say was intended to disrupt the peaceful transfer of presidential power. Sedition. Uh, hours after the ca- er, attack on the Capitol, Bertino messaged Tario saying, "Quote, you know we made this happen." End quote. 1776, motherfucker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like after this revelatory information, anyone who was screaming 1776, whether they were in Congress or not, was probably involved in shit. Hey, um, so given that this is another uh, right wing militia and we've got a con- rather a guilty plea of seditious conspiracy. Like, what are the possibilities that this implicates, uh, uh, you know, members of Congress or other people close to Trump? Uh, Carol, have at it. Oh, no. Did you mute yourself? Oh, my God. Uh, No. (laughs) I think you muted me. I'm sorry. Let's Wait, so over. did you not hear me singing over your over your monologue? No, I didn't. I'm heartbroken. Oh too. man. I was uh, like, what? he's not even reacting. He hates it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Everyone out here uh, out there listening, we're not boomers. We we know how Zoom works, presumably, for the most Prison part. Kids. Presumably. We we get you this podcast every single week and we somehow manage to not F it up. We we we're familiar with Zoom, I think. All right, let's start. Let's try that again, Carol. Uh, given that this is yet another member of a right wing militia to plead guilty to seditious conspiracy, implicating yet another larger group of fucking insurrectionists from one six. What are the what are the odds that this might further implicate other members of Congress or Trump's inner circle, presumably Roger Stone? I want to say 100 <laughs> percent. You are. Um, Carol, you are absolutely certain with. um. I mean, wasn't in, was Enrique Terrio <laughs> one of the Proud Boys who was invited to the White House like the day before, like, oh, on January 5th? Right. In the weeks before, at the very least. And wasn't he like involved, pic- pictures of him hanging out with 
congressmen trying to scare us with their, you know, stochastic terror. They're like, look at us hanging out. We're planning something. The storm is coming. Ooh, just you wait. <laughs> oh, man. When you put it that way, it's kind of depressing that, like, he was actually at, uh, all right, Proud Boy leader says he was invited to the White House. White House said it was actually a public Christmas tour. That's a fucking cover story if I ever heard one. Uh, yeah, motherfuckers are going to jail. And if um, this this particular Proud Boy member can implicate the others and secure guilty pleas from them as well, and they cooperate, I'm fairly sure uh, motherfuckers will be going to prison shortly. Just give it some time. I know you people are out there impatient. You're like, oh, DAJ, do something, do something. They're doing something. There's a trial going on right now as we speak, potentially hoping to sh- secure a verdict. A seditious conspiracy with the Oath Keepers. And, and now we've got a, another leg up on, on the Proud Boys. Anyway, next topic. You know, if we had fewer Proud Boys and more Proud Men, we wouldn't have problems like this. Oh. I feel like it, the, the nomenclature yeah. <laughs> Proud. <laughs> that was poignant. Uh, yeah, well, I think like with like the term, the terminology with like yourself reverential in, in your terminology and how you name yourself, it's it's like it's also like alpha men, like whatever the concept is of like a dude who is a fucking alpha badass guy wouldn't fucking have to refer to himself as an alpha. OK, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm bitter. Yeah, well, it's just like I don't walk around all the time being like, hey, guys, I think I'm smart. Pretty smart. <laughs> I think I'm smart. Hey, I'm cute. <laughs> Everyone should know that I'm cute. Dude, you guys know I'm cute. Yeah, hey. like someone who's super hot didn't have to go walking around talking about how hot they are all the fucking time. Like, like yo, I'm just so hot. Like, oh my God. Like, I just, I can't help being this hot. Anyway, ne- next topic. Oath Keeper, Secret Service, Secret Contact. Uh, this is great. Secret Service, Secret Contact. A fun times. Oath Keeper's founder, Stuart Rhodes, told a member of the streamers group before the 2020 election that he had a contact in the Secret Service. A witness testified Thursday in Rhodes Capital Trial. Hey, this that that particular Oath Keeper trial I was referring to. Here we are. Huh. Yeah, fun times. John Zimmerman, who was part of the North Carolina chapter. I told you North Carolina would come up again. It's like a, a fucking breeding ground for insurrectionists, apparently. He told jurors that Rhodes claimed to have a Secret Service agent's number and to have spoken with the agent about the logistics of the September 2020 rally that then President Donald Trump held in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The claim came on the third day of testimony in the case against Rhodes and four others charged with seditious conspiracy. Zimmerman could not say for sure that Rhodes was speaking to someone with the Secret Service, only that Rhodes told him that he was, and it was not clear what they were discussing. Zimmerman said Rhodes wanted to find out the parameters that the Oath Keepers could operate under during the election year rally. Uh, It's really strange that the right wing fucking militia is like in touch with the Secret Service asking them, hey, what is and isn't okay when it comes to like plotting to overthrow the fucking government? Like what's acceptable? Um, Anyway, another Oath Keeper expected to testify against Rhodes has claimed that after the riot, Rhodes phoned someone seemingly close to Trump and made a request. Tell Trump to call on militia groups to fight to keep him in power. Authorities have not identified that person, but they will. A Secret Service spokesperson said the agency is aware of, well, aware that, quote, individuals from the Oath Keepers have contacted us in the past to make inquiries. The agency said that when creating a security plan for events, it is, quote, not uncommon for various organizations to contact us concerning security restrictions and activities that are permissible in proximity to our protected sites. Uh, is this a fucking cover story for the coming from the Secret Service? They're like, oh, yeah, hey, like all kinds of fucking militias contact us all the time. It's just the first time they ever happen to overthrow the government. It's, it's a total coincidence. I mean, it's possible that people... That, that what their, you know, their statement is easily true that people plan to coordinate security for events with them, but that doesn't really answer the question. There's, it's like, did, that's like asking, like, did you murder Clancy? And they're like, I'm around all sorts of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is a way, way to dispute the specific facts in the information, like, the, hey, I can't speak to whether or not um, Stuart Rhodes was, in fact, in contact with a Secret Service agent. 
but he fucking thought he was. And he seemed pretty sure that like, hey, I could potentially relay or have this person relay a message to Trump to basically deputize us so we can fucking attack Congress with the authority of the president. I feel like even if he did, that's that's still fucking sedition. Like there is no legal. I mean, there's no legal course of action Trump could take um, to give anyone the authority to attack the legislative branch. It's a fucking coup. I'll tell you what. And I feel bad for that guy, Clancy, who I had killed in my (laughs) pour one out for Clancy. I think (laughs) I feel if we, uh, you know, accidentally kill someone, uh, it should be like a fine, like at least like a five. Oh, you're pouring one out for for Clancy into a glass. I don't want to make a mess. (laughs) Okay, is okay. Is Ty still alive? Is she still with us? Is or is she with? I'm still. I am still alive. Oh, well, we were just wondering in case you were with Clancy. Rest in peace. <laughs> oh, no. Clancy. You're still very intoxicated, Clancy, aren't you? All right. I hardly knew you, Clancy. Uh, let's, let's all take a drink break. Goodbye. Take yeah. a shot. Join Ty in the wonderful yeah. land of intoxication, okay. inebriation, as I like to call it. Uh, drink. Yeah. Toast. Let us drink. Oh, my drink stops. A toast to DOJ. A toast to Merrick Garland. Lock oh. these motherfuckers the fuck up. Cheers. Um, Carol is toasting with weed. I don't. I don't know if that's acceptable in the drinking community, but up Do you guys want to wait and just like talk about something else and go get some wine? Uh, we'll be right back after this second commercial break. <laughs> after these messages, we'll be right back. Kayla's getting what? Not Kayla. What's her name? Carol. Ooh, Carol. <laughs> you are so hammered. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> You're cut off. <laughs> no. No more, no more, no more alcohol for you. You are done. It's a wrap. Oh, that was fucking hilarious. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Look, uh, you know, I too struggle with names. Uh, although the names I generally struggle with are some weird shit like uh, Yashishin. But yeah, I'm definitely leaving that part in where you called her Kayla. I love, I love you. I can see your vagina. No, wait, you guys can still hear me. Wait, stand up then. Like, I, I missed it. <laughs> no. Prison shirt Carol has come back to the chat. Oh, hey, guys. What's up? Uh, hey, I didn't Carol's see you back. there. Uh, okay. Well, when you walked up, so I was like, hey, I can see your vagina. And then I was mad because I missed it. <laughs> I am wearing pants. <laughs> well, that's disappointing to the podcast audience. Carol's okay, so just so everyone at home knows, I got a Twix. Oh, dude. A Snickers. What the fuck? That's Halloween candy. Three Musketeers and two bags of um, sour vampire bats. Wait. Folks, that is, that is what we like to refer to as the munchies. And that's a Halloween candy. What, um, I'm a grown up, I'm allowed to take it. <laughs> <laughs> you would whoop your kids' ass if they were like, Oh, sneaking around with all that fucking candy, and you're like, Here I am. <laughs> I'm not much of a whooper, but yes, yeah. Well, I mean, so there, I, I am pretty lenient with the candy, yeah. Well, make sure they brush their teeth, we don't want them getting cavities. That's fuck, I sound like a responsible fucking adult here. Um. All right. Cheers to Merrick Garland uh, and, and the Department of Justice locking up motherfuckers who tried to overthrow the government. You're here. Cheers to the DOJ and Merrick Garland's fine ass. Thank you. You, um, you love you some space lasers. I do. I- You're like, I, 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 you want to like get as many space lasers as you can and just have them shoot it all over you, huh? Um, the laser? 
Uh, uh, either way, avoid the eyes. <laughs> I am a, I am a chocolate shiksa, and I own it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much of this is appropriate for the podcast. It probably not zero. <laughs> Zero appropriateness. Allison is going to be like, yeah, no, nah, I'm out. <laughs> the chocolate shiksa has spoken. All right, folks, and we're back. On to the next topic. Uh, <laughs> Ron Johnson stuck more than just a temp in on sedition. Um, oh. <laughs> yes, Senator Ron Johnson acknowledged last <laughs> Tuesday that he exchanged text messages with one of Donald Trump's attorneys who led the recount in Wisconsin in 2020. Before and after, Johnson's staff tried to deliver a package to then-Vice President Mike Pence on January 6th. Um, that package was not a, a cock ring, or a cork ring, rather. It, it was, uh, you know, the, the fraudulent electors. Anyway, he added that the House Committee investigating the January 6th attack smeared him because it didn't publish... Hey, you have got... <laughs> yeah. That's a me. Give me Carol. Uh, uh... All right. <laughs> okay. Carol is consuming copious amounts of snacks on the Zoom. And uh, you know, Ty opened her mouth and was like, give me, and, and Carol threw a snack at the screen. Uh anyway. Booby snacks. <laughs> Keep oh, focused, D. I, you know, I was doing that all silently. I look, you, you know, I will admit never break character. I have been known to be distracted by a beautiful woman here or there. And you got one here and there. (laughs) (laughs) This podcast is going to get taken off the air. (laughs) Rod Johnson added that the House Committee investigating the J6 attack smeared him because it didn't publicize all the text messages between his and Pence's aides. Uh, Johnson said the entire episode lasted about an hour, referring to his ties to, <laughs> yeah, we know. Like, at first, Ron Johnson was like, oh, it was only a couple seconds at most. Johnson lasted an hour. And now he's trying to say it lasted like an hour. <laughs> yeah. We all like to brag, buddy. Sure, you lasted an hour. Uh, referring to his ties to a fake elector scheme he said he knew nothing about. He also said he didn't know the contents of the package. He said the attorney wanted to be delivered. Quote, you can't even call it participation. I wrote a couple of texts, Johnson said. He has previously distanced himself from the scheme, saying my involvement in that attempt to delivery, or rather the attempt to deliver, span the course of a couple seconds. All right, now you're trying to say it lasted an hour. Like, which one was it? Uh, and, you know, can we can we get, like, uh, her perception of events in this matter? Well, it's a billable uh, hour. It's a billable it's- hour. <laughs> It's a billable. A couple so, seconds. So even if no, you I'm just, kidding. even if you stick the tip in, it still counts. Got it. I, I got a text from the president's look. I asking for for a body count, just so I know for future reference. Anyway, I quote: I got a text from the president's lawyer asking if we could deliver something to the vice president, and if I could have a staff member handle it. Johnson said, asked whether he knew what it was he was being asked to deliver. He said, "Quote: No, I had no idea," which is obviously a fucking lie, you moron. Like, like we're stupid. Like we were just born yesterday. Like we were born on January 5th. Like we don't know. Uh, the fake electric scheme. <laughs> well, hey, that's my brother and my mom's birthday. Is really? <laughs> oh man, that's fucking no, awesome. My birthday is September 11th. That's a whole. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We oh, yeah. It's my brother and my mom's birthday that's though. Really? Oh, mm-hmm. oh man. So many people born around these unfortunate dates in U.S. history now. It's like rather depressing. These things keep happening. Uh, The fake elector scheme was an attempt by Republicans in seven battleground states. Joe Biden won in 2020. Uh, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin to offer phony slates of 84 Republicans with the idea of asking Pence to accept them as legitimate electors rather than recognize that Biden had rightfully won those states. It seems as though the more information that we get about Ron Johnson's involvement uh, in the attempt to slip Vice President Pence, these fake slates of electors uh, to help Trump steal the 2020 election, uh, it, it, it seems to implicate him more and more. Like at first, it was just a couple of seconds. And then it was like, no, sir, you didn't stick the tip in. You tried to fuck 
democracy uh, every which way from Sunday. Uh, oh, do in the, butt. Do, in the <laughs> I'm not repeating that. What? What? In- I mean, not that I'm anti-anal. It's just not for me personally. Uh, <laughs> is it possible that Ron Johnson will be the first senator in, indicted in the fake elector plot, given that he was like inches away from it, it being the deciding factor in whether or not Pence got these fucking fake electors? Either of you have at it. Carol? I think I like the candy better than the wine right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not sitting well together. <laughs> Carol, my mm-hmm. edible um, t- toffees. Oh my yeah. gosh, they are amazing. That sounds yummy. Toffees, they're so good. And folks, this is a perfect example of how the public gets distracted from these important issues. We're we're a podcast about the insurrection, and even we can't stay on topic. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I before you sent me your notes. I was like, no, I don't even know what happened this week. I don't think anything happened. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah, I remember this happening. But like. Nothing happened. <laughs> it's like, oh, nothing happened. It was just the freaking baseline, man. <laughs> That's true. Big picture. That's true. We, we do live in a world where the insanity is all consuming. And I totally understand. Like, even I have trouble. I'm like, oh my God, it's just so much. Like every day, every goddamn day. And now, and now I want a Twix. Carol. Carol's got the she's got the, the background basically. All right, grab a Twix. I'm gonna open my mouth. You you put it in there for me. Oh, oh man. Um I ate that. For those of you mm. who can't see it, I, I, I ate it. Joke's on you. This is a Three Musketeers. That's why I'm making this face. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about me? I want to eat something uh, appropriate. <laughs> There's plenty of candy at my house, kids. That's a long trip. Uh, it's a long drive. Gas is too high. I don't think I'll make it. I will send you some candy. Did you I- tell me where you live? Uh, I'll give you I'll give you my address offline. I don't feel like that's also appropriate information to put in the podcast. I did not mean on the podcast. That would be stupid. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, yeah, because you know, d- despite the fact that most serial killers are men, there are some creepy women out there who might show up. Uh, anyway, on to the next topic. That is true, and her name is Jenny Thomas. I like to wait and make a few seasons of a podcast with a man before I murder him. <laughs> <laughs> you know not many women have told me this but it's nice to know that i'm worth waiting for uh, all righty uh next next topic uh elon how oh god elon's credibility exploding hey how is a man supposed to concentrate in in, in these circumstances uh this is a, a a hostile work environment or at least hostile to my attention <laughs> Um, anyway, the next topic, Elon's credibility exploding like his cars. Uh, Elon Musk learned about the. <laughs> <This is cheap>. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk learned about the Kremlin's red lines for ending the war in Ukraine during a recent conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin, who probably won't be president for long because he likely won't be alive for long. Uh, according to an account of the purported conversation from uh, political scientist Ian Bremmer, a uh, very interesting person there. Bremmer, r- political political dude. He's, uh, I mean, very, very thoughtful and informative when it comes to like the geopolitical circumstances going on and in, in especially Europe at this point. Anyway, Bremmer reported that Musk had said Putin was prepared to negotiate on ending the war during a recent talk. Shortly after publication of the report in Vice, Musk said that the conversation with Putin never occurred, insisting in a tweet that his long conversation with the Russian president was on the topic of, quote, space. And approximately 18 months ago. Wait, uh, so I have to to decide between who I find is more credible between Elon Musk and this. Ian Bremmer. Uh, Well, Musk said that Ian Bremmer is not to be trusted. So with that said, uh, I am 100 percent. Uh, pun intended. Go, go, Carol. 
You're one hundred percent certainty uh, that Ian Bremmer is telling the truth and Musk is lying his ass off. Yeah, yeah. What up? The disputed communication allegedly took place before Musk tweeted his controversial peace plan uh, to end the war last week, which included Ukraine pledging to be quote neutral in world affairs, recognizing annex Crimea as part of Russia, and steps to legitimize Russia's recent claim of annex er, annexing four additional regions of Ukraine. Uh, yeah, his base his basic idea of a peace plan is uh Russia gets everything it wants and Ukraine has to surrender. Well, that seems mighty funny. I wonder who else might have that particular perspective on the war in Ukraine that he had talked to recently. But Elon also personally rejected a Ukrainian request to extend his satellite internet service to Crimea, the SpaceX CEO, fearing that an effort to retake the peninsula from Russian forces could lead to a nuclear war. Well, surprise, surprise, he's taking the side of Russia in a war where Russia invaded Ukraine as opposed to, I, I don't know, re- Ukraine fighting for its independence in its land. How, funny. Uh, following Russia's February invasion of Ukraine, Musk funded the U.S. or Musk funded by the U.S. government provided Kiev with thousands of. And I know a number of people like to pronounce it uh, Kiev, but um, from the. Ukrainian pronunciation, I've heard it's the correct use of, or the correct pronunciation is Kiev. Anyway, um, provided Kiev with thousands of Starlink systems. I am, I don't know why I went so off talk with that. I don't know what I'm thinking. Anyway, uh, thousands of Starlink Man systems. Man of the world. No, I just. Man of the <laughs> world. I appreciate how considerate you are. When you say that, but I couldn't get that other Ukrainian hoes name right, but I feel like I can at least get their capital city correct. Uh, Enabling Ukrainian forces to communicate in what were previously dead zones. The low energy requirements of the services satellite receivers have enabled it to be connected to reconnaissance drones, providing valuable real-time intelligence on Russian movements and the ability to target them. But recently, there have been problems. Last week, the Financial Times reported that the service was suffering catastrophic outages on the front lines, prompting speculation that it had been shut off in areas controlled by Russia. Uh, This, to me, sounds like um, Elon is now in the tank for Putin, and he's out here trying to sabotage the fucking Ukraine strategy, and he's spreading fucking Russian propaganda everywhere. Uh, I'm not saying he's a Kremlin asshat, but if it walks like a Kremlin asset and it talks like a Kremlin asset, it must be what? What, kids? What's the answer? Kremlin asset. <laughs> oh, Carol for the win. You got this. Girl. Are we going to get canceled? In Soviet Russia, hat asses you. <laughs> when I do a bad Trump impression, it's like an impression of one guy. But when you do like a bad Russian impression, it's like indicative of how funny it is that an entire group of people have that accent. When they, although not everyone's Russian accent is the same when they speak. Anyway, uh, yeah, is, is Musk a bad person, first and foremost? Yes or no? Yes. No, I'm kidding. Don't answer that. He'll sue us. <laughs> okay, let's have discovery about how whether he yes he, he can tell me why he's not a bad person. Oh well, it's funny you mentioned that because it seems likely that uh you know considering Musk recent bid to buy Twitter is back on track, uh it's it's mostly that he uh, agreed to the original terms because he wanted to be uh, or wanted to avoid being deposed in court. Yeah, that was a fun game. It's like, oh, will he or won't he buy Twitter? Well, no, he's backing out. Oh, no, the deal's back on. Well, actually, well, it's only back on if the financing doesn't fall through. And apparently it looks like the financing won't fall through. But, uh, yeah, it's all one uh, one giant plot to get out of from under the deposition because no one wants to, let's be honest, no one wants to be deposed in court. Carol, you might not know about that since you don't really do too much uh, legal representation in court. I don't want to be deposed. <laughs> You're a lawyer. But I know, I know enough about well, you know, preferring to avoid depositions. Yeah, especially when multiple billions of dollars are on the line. So I totally get that. But yeah, back back to the most important point. Uh, you know, it's funny how these people are always talking about how, oh, the Russia conspiracy is a hoax. And then they're magically somehow cohorts with Putin or Russian assets or spitting Kremlin talking points or like spreading Russian propaganda. It's always funny how that happens. I wonder what kind of deal uh putin offered alone um in exchange for his cooperation lithium is there lithium in russia i mean there must be i think there may be yeah 
I, I may or may not be wrong. Is there lithium in Ukraine? I feel like China is one of the um, world's predominant manufacturers or rather processors of lithium. Li- what was lithium? that famous Elon quote? Um, we'll coup anyone we want. <laughs> I don't think that's I don't think that's what he said. I don't think that's it. Well, Probably. who who we want? Uh, I'm gonna have to verify that with the internet. Ain't um, no party like a apartheid party. That's- <laughs> we will coo whoever we want. Deal with it. Um, you know, Ty, we are in fact not sending <laughs> Elon back to Africa. I thought about this, and like our people, <laughs> our people deserve better. We we deserve better than this. Because the thing is, if we send Elon back to Africa and he'll ship his fucking terrible cars over there um, and his autopilot, all uh, autopiloted Teslas are known to, um, I don't know, autopilot directly into black people. So I fear I feel like our people wouldn't fare well. That is true. That is true. That is that is true. All right. Everyone's wasted. Uh, Do you? you I'm white girl wasted. I'm Carol Burkow wasted right now. <laughs> girl, why, does, why does Carol have to catch a straight eye? That's so unfair. <laughs> because I love her and I want her to be in everything in my life. Well, you know, well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said that, by the way. I can't find his tweet, but I can see like a thousand screenshots of it. Let's say that's totally fair. And, and, you know, look, that's not fair because Carol's only partially white. She's mostly Jewish. And, you know, according to Kanye <laughs> and according to Kanye West, black people are Jews anyway. So for, <laughs> welcome to the welcome to the, the party, Carol. You've you've been um, you've been selected as the number one overall pick in the racial who me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've been uh, selected number one overall or the number one overall pick in the racial draft. Uh, Yay! Thanks to, thanks to your Jewish heritage, Carol you're now indoctrinated. She's honorarily black. <laughs> Wait a minute! I feel the power of Marks washing over me. Yes, <laughs> take me into your loving embrace, Marks. I want to go to a riot. Oh! No. oh. <laughs> uh, what? What were we talking about? So anyway, do do either of you <laughs> have any closing thoughts? Prison shirt, Carol. Uh, <laughs> you keep saying that with like okay so carol has bangs I, love it. I can't get like <laughs> and she has glasses and i'm i'm a part of i'm i'm team velma and your team prison i guess we're gonna agree to disagree on that um yeah but yeah if you want to like get the red skirt and the socks out the orange socks with the flats uh for halloween it's coming soon i feel free we'll we'll do the the Velma and Doggo on the Twitter, I suppose. I don't like doing repeats, but <laughs> for the I haven't thought of man. any better idea, and it's like not like me usually. <laughs> All on top of the the costumes game. Oh, um, man. Well, you devote so much energy to this podcast; it's totally understandable how you neglected like planning for Halloween costumes. I can see how your priorities in are in order, and we appreciate that here on the podcast. Pray if it makes you feel any better. Ty didn't know your name; she called you. Uh, Kayla before you came back. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> she was like, what's her name? Kayla? I mean, Carol. I'm like, damn, girl. Like, we. <sighs> yeah. And then I was like, I'll tie your cut off. No more, no more alcohol for you. You you calling girls by the other name, the wrong name and stuff. She, and then she got to be like, well, damn, Ty, who is Kayla? And how much time I'm are you so spending ashamed. with her? I'm so ashamed. Carol's all jealous. <laughs> I, I don't think there's actually a Kayla involved. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was just an honest mistake. It happened. She sounds nice. We've whatever. All, we've all called someone the, the wrong name before. Uh, or or I have. Uh, that's I a story have, for another I have day. The hiccups because I'm like really drunk. And I, can't uh-huh. stop I was trying to think of a wrong name for you. But <laughs> all I could think of was like Hiccup. Donathan. <laughs> Donathan. It's a mix of Don and Jonathan. <laughs> I was like, Donathan, no. How about Johnium? No. Why can't I just think of a real name that's not his name? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, are you just like taking the first letter of one name and then combining it? With the other? 
<laughs> do you also listen to the Dan Levitar podcast with Stu Guys? Is that what we're doing? The Chris Cody thing? I don't no. know what that is. You don't even know. Oh, so the two of you just stumbled on it like entirely separate of each other. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. For anyone who likes Chris Cody, uh, I, I too am a fan. Uh, he he combines like the first letter of one word with the rest of another word to make an entirely different, crappier word. Um, yeah, he would call that a, a quirt. I don't know what the fuck. Are you, anyway, are you doing card tricks? No, I'm just playing with the roll of stamps, man. <laughs> so, closing thoughts. Yeah, yeah. roll uh, stamps. The, um, the, the usual routine. I'll I'll let either of you go first, if you will, if you'd like. No pressure. Okay. Postcards to voters.org. Get get some addresses and write some postcards. If you need some help with the stamps, you know, let me know because this is self-funded. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a dollar limit on that helping people buy stamps offer. <laughs> Cause I know you guys are all listening and you all want to write postcards. And you want like, and you want to save democracy. And I feel like, you know, a fucking postcard isn't a, a huge hurdle. It's not a lot to ask. Plus, you can drink while you're writing them. I made my friend and I had margaritas and wrote postcards, and it was a lovely afternoon. Oh, I love it. For democracy. I'm signing these, Carol, democracy enthusiast. For democracy. Go democracy! All right. (laughs) Okay. Ty, (laughs) how how about you, Ty? Do you have any closing thoughts? Um... Same. Not closing thoughts, not thoughts. Like, think, oh, anyway. not not thoughts as like in the the like, hoes over there. The uh, the no. hoes over there. No Some thoughts. Oh, as, as in but like I musings. Like too, though you I like, like them, them hoes over there. I, I mean, like hoes over there too. Yeah, especially if they're of the space laser variety. We got it. Hoes in this house. Some holes. holes in this. Okay, I can't get off track. I got someone. Okay. One of us has to be responsible. <laughs> and it's it's a sad and that person isn't me <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a sad day in the world when i'm the responsible one uh yeah something has gone horribly wrong with that anyway yes yes ty closing thoughts if you like vote, guys get out the fucking vote we are tired we are exhausted we are all feeling the same thing but our vote is our power, period. So let's do this. All righty. Yes. Uh, for me, I think I'll, um, all right, bear with me for a, a minute. It's a sports ball reference for any of you out there who are, uh, who engage in the watching of the sports ball. Uh, I, I enjoy the sports ball activities on the weekends, the, the Saturday college sports ball and the Sunday professional sports ball. Uh, this is a story that uh, kind of, it, it, it intertwines the two of those. And, and also like, there's a, there's a bigger, bigger picture relationship here. Um, so Herm Edwards, uh, who was a former NFL coach turn uh, commentator on, on one of the various sports ball networks uh, ended up taking a job at Arizona state as a sports ball coach college sports ball coach um that that's football um for any of the uh, you out there who are unfamiliar with the term sports ball thank you uh, <laughs> 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 it's very and so anyway herm edwards who took a job at arizona state uh apparently was unpopular with his coaching staff his assist- assistant coaches uh concocted a plot to basically get him fired uh basically by sabotaging the team and, uh, you know, giving information about like the game plan and the roster and the players and sabotaging the, the scheme uh, over the course of, you know, the weeks that, that they do the planning uh, and, and, and trying to cost him his job by making the team lose games so that he would be fired and uh, one of the staff could, you know, become his a replacement. Right. And where this uh, intersects with uh, politics in general is. Like it's it's incredible that these people who pay to do this job um, would stoop to a level of of sabotaging uh, what could be the potentially limited careers of these college athletes, these kids uh, who are doing everything they can to win, 
but can't rely on adults that are supposed to be the responsible. I mean, literal, the literal adults in the room can't be relied upon uh, to do what's in their best interest and what's in the best interest of their organization uh, because they're in, uh, seeking a personal gain and involved in exacting a vendetta against the person who was supposedly in charge, right? And where this comes into play with politics is it's a <laughs> it's an ironic parallel uh, that the Republican Party, one of the only two major parties in America, is willing to sacrifice uh, their ideals, uh, the cohesion of uh, the American people in general. They're willing to put democracy on on the line. Uh, in exchange for chasing their own personal gain and airing their grievances uh, towards the Democratic Party just because they happen to be their political opponents. Like, I, it's just, of the two uh, predominant <laughs> political parties in the country, it's a shame uh, that one of them, supposedly the adults in the room, are... <laughs> are just keen on becoming the worst possible versions of themselves at the expense of the American people and everyone around them. Like, shit's fucking unacceptable. And I think that concludes this episode of part of the Insura- insurrection. Uh, everyone out there, I hope you sober up is I think Ty is down for the count and we'll get back to you <laughs> next week. <laughs> She's alive. <laughs> She's alive. I, I am alive a little bit. Unless you go to Canada and you're cooperating with the DOJ when it comes to a criminal investigation into potential foreign agents. Talk to you guys next week.